Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here. If you've played Arena recently, you'll know there is one caster head and shoulders above the rest. The potential to wipe you off the map with a single spell whilst taking next to no damage themselves. I'm of course talking about Destruction Warlocks. You've asked for it, so we've hit up European Warlock King Wallerix and asked for his top 5 ways to counter his class of choice. Welcome to knowing your enemy. Our first way to counter destruction is knowing how and why their bolts hit hard. We've all been there, randomly getting one shot by a destruction warlock and sitting there scratching your head about what just happened. So Chaos Bolt generally doesn't one shot you. In fact, a normal Chaos Bolt without any other buffs hits in the range of about 50k, give or take, which when people have over 500k health isn't really that much in comparison. So what makes it so that these bolts go from hitting 50k all the way up to the potential of hitting for absurd amounts? The most I've seen is actually nearing 400k. Well, the answer is a talent called Grimoire of Supremacy. What this does is whilst Infernal is active, every shard spent will boost the Warlock's Chaos Bolt damage by 8%. Now, with Infernal lasting 30 seconds and also increasing your shard generation whilst active, Destruction Warlocks can easily get this to the 20 stack mark at which it's capped, given the right circumstances, which then nets them a flat 160% increase to the damage Chaos Bolt is capable of. You can identify a Warlock's stacks by the buff he gains. You can then check the stacks by the number located inside. Also, to gain the stacks as mentioned, the Warlock of course has to have Infernal active. So, if you see an Infernal, it's more than likely going to mean trouble. Now, what also makes this even more of a problem is that the Neck Essence Vision of Perfection, when procced, spawns an Infernal for the Warlock which, like their normal Infernal, allows them to build stacks, and is something almost all Warlocks run, especially at lower ratings. So, if it's not their main 3 minute cooldown Infernal, you still need to be wary. So, how do you counter this then, you may ask? Well, simply put, during this time, you need to either avoid Chaos Bolts altogether by line of sighting or interrupting them, or just altogether retreat behind the pillar and wait out the Infernals, which is common practice at higher ratings. Stopping the Warlock securing Chaos Bolts during this 30 second window will greatly aid in reducing the chances of these not so random one shots. It's also worth noting that Infernals are not the only thing you need to be scared of. Warlocks have access to an offensive cooldown called Dark Soul Instability. What this does is increases the Warlock's Chaos Bolt damage by a flat 30%. This again is just as scary as the potential of Infernals, especially if they combine this with their already high stacks. So, if you see a Warlock pop in this, know the subsequent bolt and any after whilst this buff remains are going to be hitting extremely hard. Which brings us nicely to our second way to counter Destruction Warlocks. And trust me, this is something all Destruction Warlocks hate and wish didn't exist. I'm of course talking about Pillars. Now, when facing Destruction Warlocks, these become your best friends. Unlike a lot of other casters, Warlocks heavily lack any form of real instant damage. If they can't cast, they can't really get any pressure rolling at all, let alone build up any form of one-shot potential. So, as simple as this sounds, this is honestly our number one takeaway from this Know Your Enemy. Hug the pillar and enjoy. Warlock's only button that is instant damage is Conflagrate, which is a fairly weak hitting ability, and outside of that, they have no means of doing damage whatsoever. Not to mention, Destruction has some of the lowest mobility in the game. No way to remove slows and no mobility outside of their gateway. So, chasing you is incredibly hard for them. A very common mistake both new players and even experienced players make is falling into the trap of kicking the wrong spells. A Destruction Warlock has three schools of magic, Shadow, Fire and Chaos. Shadow is primarily just for their crowd control, so the only real noteworthy spells are Fear and Shadow Fury. Their Fire School contains most of their resource generators, so Incinerate, Immolate and Conflagrate. Kicking either of these schools of magic is completely a bait, and if you consistently kick these, then you're going to have or have been having a very hard time against Warlocks. 
Chaos is their third school of magic. Not only is this of course the same school as their hard hitting ability Chaos Bolt, but if interrupted on Chaos will render them unable to use either their shadow or fire schools of magic so essentially leaving them unable to cast anything at all. So remember when facing Warlocks, unless it's a very important fear, always, always, always look to kick Chaos Bolt. And our fourth tip on this list is again something players less familiar with Destruction often don't take into consideration. A very common PvP talent for Destruction Warlocks to run is Foul Fisher. What this does is after being hit by a Chaos Bolt, we will leave a small eruption out of the ground five yards around that target. Whilst remaining inside of this fissure, all healing you take is reduced by 25%. Something people don't take into consideration with this is that Foul Fisher actually stacks with other Mortal Strike effects. So say for instance you're facing a Warrior and a Destruction Warlock. If you have Mortal Strike and remain inside of the Foul Fisher, you're going to be taking some seriously reduced healing. So always try to get into the habit of moving the second you get bolted. That way the chances of you getting caught inside of a Foul Fisher are going to be greatly reduced. And our fifth and final way to counter Destruction Warlocks is something not many people do, and that's utilizing your Purge and Dispel, if you have it of course. Destruction Warlocks have a passive called Backdraft, this is what enables them to secure those lightning fast bolts you often see, as Backdraft reduces the cast time of Chaos Bolt by 30%. This buff is actually purgeable, and is something not many players take advantage of, but trust me, it is annoying for the Destruction Warlock. Wallerix, when asked, said this is something that when players do, makes his life a complete misery, and is something that not many people actually do. Ultimately though, not every class can purge, so this mainly applies to Shadow Priests and Elementals for the most part. This isn't the only thing you achieve by purging though. A baseline talent all Destruction Warlocks pick up is Reverse Entropy. This gives the Warlock 15% baseline haste when propped, and guess what, it's a magical buff. So not only are you increasing their Chaos Bolt cast time by 30%, you're also removing a 15% increase to their overall haste. Learning how to utilize your Dispel is tricky versus Warlocks, but there are three main things to look out for. First is Havoc. Havoc is a curse applied to the target that will then duplicate most spells used by the Warlock onto that target namely Mortal Coil. If you're quick, classes that have access to a D-Curse can actually remove this buff before the second coil goes out. But even if you're slow, it's still worth doing, as it will help to reduce the Warlock's damage and also their shard generation. The second and most obvious thing to dispel as a healer is Fear. This will enable your teammates to then look to kick any subsequent Chaos Ball. A common ploy Warlocks look to do is to fear their main target into a Chaos Bolt, so dispelling your teammates can help to prevent this and the damage that they take. And the last thing to be on the lookout for is more situational. When you're playing the Pillar versus a Warlock and looking to keep them locked down as much as possible, the best thing you can dispel is actually Immolate. This reduces a ton of their overall consistent pressure as well as their shard generation and even removes the potential of their Azerite trait Flashpoint. Alright then guys, that's going to be our top 5 tips in order to counter Destruction Warlocks. Hope this was useful and be sure to let us know what class you want to see next. Thanks for watching.